go further. Planes that fly faster and laptops that are more durable than ever before. These are just some of the things we can achieve by using composite materials. Composite materials are made out of two distinct materials combined together. Take fiberglass for example. It's made out of glass fiber, which is essentially strands of glass, molded into plastic. Fiberglass is a lot stronger and a lot stiffer compared to plastic on its own, but is significantly lighter than glass. In the past few years, big companies have taken on the challenge of producing these components out of mass producing these components out of composite materials. This is quite the challenge. Imagine making 100 car bonnets a day out of composite materials. It requires an automatic manufacturing process that is efficient, robust, and repetitive. So how would you make such a material? We start off with carbon fiber, with a reinforcing textile, take carbon fiber for example. It's cut and placed into the mold, which is compacted to create the final shape of the part. The mold is then injected with resin, which is essentially liquid plastic, and is compacted further to squeeze out any excess resin and to ensure that there are no air bubbles left in the mold. The resin is then cured by applying heat over time, and the solid part is made. Now, in order to be able to manufacture these things much more efficiently, we need to know how the materials behave during the manufacturing process. That way, we can optimize and ensure that we're making it the best way possible. The focus of my PhD is during the resin injection phase in the middle. As you can see in the bottom image, there's a picture describing the flow of resin through the textile. The dark area is wet, and the rest is still dry textile. Different materials behave differently, and the resin flows through them differently. So my PhD focuses on modeling the flow of the resin through the textile. I've been using a number of different approaches to model this. The textile is recreated as a 3D geometry on the computer using image processing techniques. The flow of the resin is then simulated using finite, finite volume methods. This enables us to simulate what's going on inside the mold in step three on the computer and get the crucial material characteristics that we require to know how long to let the resin flow and to optimize the process. At the end of the day, this will mean that the big companies can manufacture these components faster, more efficiently, and are at a reduced cost, so you can get your faster car, your plane, or your laptop much cheaper. <laughs>